Welcome back to our COVID-19 special as we answer your questions about the coronavirus pandemic. Let's get right back to our questions now for Dr. Post, Dr. Suttle, and Mayor Tenhaken. Uh, this is for Dr. Post. Sherry asks, I have heard conflicting accounts whether we should be using a dehumidifier. Some accounts say to humidify, which is the most beneficial. Um, that, in regards to that, it is basically a balance. Um, you want to keep your home the same humidity as you would as you would a uh, normal time of the year. Um, one, I think why the question comes up is because if, if the air is too dry in your home, it can have a tendency to dry out the mucous membranes in your mouth, your throat, and into like your respiratory tree. Um, when that happens, um, when that dries out, the protective mucus layer gets damaged, um, and that can make you more susceptible to infections such as coronavirus or even um, um, subsequent pneumonia. So my recommendation of that would just be where you would normally be advised to keep your humidity for the time of the year we are in. Okay, well, this next question is for Dr. Suttle. Uh, Brittany asks, I was wondering if my asthma makes me at a higher risk for getting COVID-19, for getting COVID-19. To piggyback off that question, Dr. Suttle, can you refresh us uh, about people most at risk? Certainly. Um, so in terms of those at risk for getting the virus, um, really it's um, those with immune compromised systems. Um, so some of those would be type 1 diabetics, those that are on um, chemotherapy, uh, and those that have a suppressed immune system because of certain medications they might take. Uh, in addition, uh, it's just those... <clears throat> But, so to, sorry, <laughs> so the question is regards to asthmatics. I think the asthmatics are more likely to have more severe illness. So they might not be more at risk of, of getting the infection, but when they do get the infection, they're gonna have a more severe infection. And that's also what we see in those individuals with hypertension, uh, those individuals with um, heart disease and other respiratory illnesses. Thanks, Dr. Settle. The next question is for Dr. Post. Ashley asks, how safe are groceries, packages, and mail to bring into your home? Should they be left to sit for days or wiped down with a cleaner? Uh, correct. And there's, uh, in regards to that, there's various recommendations out there, and you'll see, um, and it's hard to know which guideline to follow exactly in general. Um, a, a very uh, conservative approach would be leaving mail and things like that set for up to 24 hours if you have that luxury ability. Um, in reality, I, uh, at least four hours is a, is a nice measure to have. Um, they say in general, the virus on most services lives for for four hours or less possibly, but there, there it can be an increased length of time depending on the material type, the surface type, things like that. So I do think if you can wipe down the surfaces, um, that, that's another thing it can help. You know, there's not exact perfect answers here. A lot of times we just have to do our best, like it, like we do a social distancing and isolation, do what's reasonable, do our best, use common sense, and uh, that's, I think, the best we can do. All right, this next question is for Mayor Tenhaken. Leanne asks, my daughter is a nurse working in a high-risk exposure position. What protocols should her roommate follow as well as for our family? What kind of housing is available for nurses so they don't put their roommates at risk? Well, that's a great question. I can't speak to the type of housing that, you know, our healthcare systems are providing to uh, some of their, you know, people who want to quarantine. I know that in the city of Sioux Falls, for instance, we've partnered with, uh, with the University of Sioux Falls and allow some of our high risk, higher risk uh, people to quarantine themselves if they'd like in the dorms there. So for instance, our police officers and our firefighters uh, who are dealing with a lot of people very in very close corridors every day, you know, if they have people at home that are at risk and they'd feel safer quarantining themselves and isolating themselves for a time period, they can do that. You know, my advice to, uh, to uh, Leanne and to her daughter would be this, is that uh, if her daughter is, uh, is dealing with a lot of COVID positive patients or is treating COVID patients uh, as a nurse, uh, then her roommate needs to realize that she may be uh, in a risky situation staying there. It maybe it needs to look at an alternative living situation for this period of time. That's something that they need to work out. So we do have isolation centers that we have set up in different hospital, or excuse me, different uh, hotels around the city as well for some of our vulnerable populations, some of our homeless populations who don't have the ability to easily isolate. And so we've set up centers like that around the city as well. All right, thank you, Mayor. Well, that is all for our special report on air on Kelloland TV, but we're gonna continue this conversation online. We have a lot more viewer questions to get to yet.